Do you have problems with understanding fast speech? Do you sometimes find that when you watch TV series and films that you need the subtitles because when you turn them off you don't understand anything because they sound too fast? Maybe you listen to conversations with your friends or with your colleagues and you think, I can't, I can't join in because I can't follow the conversation, it's too fast. In this video I'm going to give you three tips to help you with your listening comprehension. This video is geared more towards intermediate and above, so if you're stuck on that plateau and you think, oh Emma, I can't improve my listening, I don't know how to improve my listening, I listen to endless podcasts and TV series with the subtitles on and my English is not improving, well this video is definitely for you if that is how you see yourself. So three tips, let's start with the first one. This is gonna sound like an obvious one and you're gonna hate me when you start doing it. Start listening to materials that are not designed for English learners. If you're listening to podcasts to learn English, fantastic, great. However, these materials have been specifically scripted, designed and adapted with you as a learner in mind. So they're not using the kind of vocabulary that we may naturally use or idioms or expressions. Uh, phrasal verbs, things like that. They may be speaking slower and more clearly. That's why when you listen to these podcasts and then you go and watch a TV series, you need the subtitles because you're not quite used to the speed yet of natural speech. I get so many comments on my videos of people asking me, Emma, you speak too fast. No, I don't speak fast. I speak a normal speed. What the issue is here is that you're just not used to the speed yet because you're still listening to these kinds of materials that are adapted and designed for English learners and that's fine. What I'm saying is that if maybe you've plateaued and you're stuck and you're not sure how to start understanding this natural rapid speech, then you need to start listening to more of those materials. So what you can start to do is Think about your hobbies, think about what you're interested in and start listening to things about that because if you're interested in it then you will want to listen to it more. Let's imagine for example you are really interested in video games, okay? I'm going to do a shameless plug. If you are interested in video games then go check out my Twitch channel. It's Procrastination with Emma and I teach English using video games on there. But let's imagine you really like playing video games, you're really interested in technology. Maybe you find a YouTube channel that discusses different tech. They talk about the latest PlayStation that's coming out or the latest Xbox. Maybe you really like Nintendo Switch games, so you find a YouTuber about Nintendo Switch. Maybe you just want to listen to someone who's playing the game, like what I do on my Twitch channel, and you want to just be more of an observer, maybe ask questions, things like that. Like, Emma, what was that word that person said? What does it mean, blah, blah, blah. You can do that and you will enjoy it more because it is something you are interested in. So to round off this point, this very long point, find materials that are not designed for English learners. Instead, find ones that you are interested in and that are not designed for English learners. So YouTube channels, all of that other stuff, podcasts, radio shows, whatever you want, okay? I'm not saying to ditch the English teachers on YouTube, it's definitely not what I'm saying. I'm not telling you to ditch your podcasts, but what I am telling you is to start exposing yourself to different types of materials that are not designed for English learners because you will see a huge difference between a TV series and how they speak and how we speak as teachers. They're very, very different. For example, I'm learning Spanish. Well, I've been learning Spanish for quite a while and from time to time my boyfriend puts on El Rubius and we watch his YouTube videos together and I don't understand about 80% of the stuff that El Rubio says, but I listen and I pick up words, I pick up slang and, you know, he speaks incredibly fast. So when I first started watching his videos, I thought, oh, I can't understand anything, literally nothing. <laughs> the only words I'm getting are the little English words that he's adding. But with time, we started watching, you know, videos nearly every day, I started to understand. And the same happened when I was learning Portuguese. 
I remember I was listening to this really good podcast and it was this woman who interviewed Portuguese speakers from around the world who traveled and who lived in different countries. So I was listening to loads of different accents and I really liked that. I started to listen and think, hmm, hold on, I can tell the difference between someone's accent who's from Rio and someone's accent who's from Sao Paulo. I can hear the difference between European Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese. I found that really, really useful. So find stuff that you're interested in. I promise it will also keep you more motivated as well if you're struggling with motivation and you will find it more enjoyable. And persevere. It will be really difficult at first, but persevere. Give it a few weeks and you will start to kind of decode these sounds and blocks of what seems like words into actual words. You will start to get used to it, I promise. Before we get on to part two, I would just like to talk about today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. And the reason why I'm mentioning them now is because they relate very closely to point number one. Skillshare is an online learning community where they have thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Topics are on things like illustration, design, photography, crafts, freelancing and more. What's fantastic is that you can take lessons in things that you are interested in and they will be completely in English. They also give subtitles as well for you. If you're thinking of starting a YouTube channel, because I know quite a few English teachers reach out to me and they want to start making their own online content, then I highly recommend a course called YouTube for Beginners by Jeremy Mora. He talks about a lot of the things that I have used in my own videos. He also shares some of the tips and things, some tools that I use as well for YouTube, so I highly recommend his group of classes if you're interested in making videos. There is also an online community with millions of other members. People can ask questions, they also share their work. I've been taking a course, let me find the name, Start Drawing, three fun freeing exercises to spark your creativity. She does like lots of different drawing exercises and I really, really enjoy doing those. They really remind me of when I was doing my art course quite a while ago, over 10 years ago. If you have quite a busy schedule, then don't worry about that. You don't need to be there at a specific time. You can take them whenever you like. You can also take an unlimited number of classes when you join. It is simply just a $10 membership each month if you pay annually. They are offering you a free trial if you use the link below in my description. So if you're interested in that, then you can click on that and you can join the community. I am also on there and I quite enjoy, as I said, a lot of the drawing courses. I'm quite interested in the YouTube course as well. There were some things in there that I hadn't learned before. So if all of that sounds like your cup of tea, links in the description. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the description will get a free premium Skillshare membership. So be quick. Anyway, let's go back to the video. Point number two. Now you're gonna hate me for this one, but if you're watching things with subtitles on, turn off the subtitles. You're gonna hate me. You're gonna say, Emma, but I don't understand anything. And I completely understand. I've been there as well but you have to trust me. Imagine you're learning how to ride a bike. You can ride the bike with the stabilizers on. The stabilizers are the little wheels that you put on children's bicycles to help them get their balance and learn how to ride a bicycle, okay? Imagine you still have your stabilizers on. You are riding your bicycle, you're very comfortable. This is you watching things with subtitles. Now let's imagine Mama Emma comes along and she says, come on kid, Let's take those stabilizers off that bicycle. I take the stabilizers off and what? It's gonna be really wonky. You're not going to have good balance. It's going to be difficult riding that bicycle without the stabilizers on. That is you going into the world of watching things without subtitles or without transcriptions. 
Now I know this is really difficult, so here's a really nice way to transition. Think of a TV series that you have watched, or a film you have watched, or a podcast that you've listened to, etc, and you have had the subtitles or transcript. You understand more or less what's happening in that episode, that film, whatever. Listen to it again, or watch it again, but this time without subtitles. So watch something again that you've already watched in either your first language or with the subtitles on, and see how you do this time because now you will know what's happening. You've already got the context. What's also really important, and this is something a lot of people don't do, is you need to work out why you can't understand and why you're struggling to understand. So for example, if you're having problems with the vocabulary, then you need to focus more on vocabulary. Is it a case of the grammar? Maybe you don't know some of the structures that they're using. Maybe it's because you feel that they're talking too quickly, things like that. So once you put the subtitles back on, you think, hold on, I know all the words, <laughs> but when they speak, I just can't get what they're saying. It's too fast. Point number three is going to help with that. If you're having problems, not with vocabulary, not with grammar, but with the actual speed and listening, keep in mind that English is one of the slowest spoken languages. When you think, hmm, they're speaking really, really fast, they're not. They're speaking normal speed. <laughs> and English is one of the slowest spoken languages in the world. So for point number three, if you find that vocabulary isn't an issue, and grammar isn't an issue, idioms, expressions, etc. When you have the subtitles on, you understand everything. But then once you turn the subtitles off, you think, wow, this is really fast. Really, really, really focus on connected speech. Learn more about connected speech. Learn about sentence stress. Learn about contractions. For example, I will becomes I'll. Learn about ellipsis where we remove words, we remove sounds, and so on. Learn about these things. These are the things that I talk about on my channel. A lot of people think I only focus on pronunciation and helping you develop your speaking, but actually the majority of the topics that I talk about are not for you to start using in your own speech. They're actually helping you with your listening. So the videos that I've done about connected speech that are analyzing a text in a lot of detail, they are not necessarily there for you to copy and for you to do in your own speech. They're there if you want to, but the main goal is also to help you with your listening comprehension because knowing about connected speech, ellipsis, all of these other things, it's so crucial when it comes to listening because Many speakers will use these features when they are talking, so it's good to be aware of them so that it can help you with your own understanding. So a quick recap. Point number one, make sure that you're listening to materials that are not designed for English learners and make sure you find something that you are interested in so it will keep you listening and keep you motivated. Two, turn off the subtitles. If you find it difficult, watch something with subtitles, then watch it again without. As a 2.5, <laughs> also work out why you're not understanding things without subtitles. Why is it that you're not able to understand natural speech with your colleagues talking and so on? Is it the grammar that you need to work on? Is it your vocabulary? Is it just them speaking too quickly? And the last one, if you find that it is just them speaking too quickly and your grammar and vocabulary are fine and you know that because when you turn on subtitles or you ask people to repeat, you understand everything they said, then start looking at stress, connected speech, contractions, ellipsis, all these features that we have in natural rapid speech because they will really, really help you with understanding more, hmm, let's say faster. <laughs> so they will help you understand faster and more natural speech is basically what I want to say. Just persevere, be patient with yourself. There is absolutely no timeline with any of this. So if you feel that after a few days you're improving, fantastic. If you feel that after a few weeks you're not improving, you maybe just need more time and more patience for yourself. Learning a language is a lifelong process. If we could all learn a language in 30 days, like some courses suggest, we would all be fluent in 10 plus languages now. So have patience with yourself. I just want to remind you of that. And you can do this. You can do this. 
you are completely capable of learning English and you're completely capable of improving your listening comprehension and understanding fast, rapid speech. So that's the end of this video. It's been a little bit long, a little bit ranty, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's because I'm passionate about this. I want to help, I want to give you some advice and I really hope it helps. These tips I have actually used in my own language learning as I've spoken about with Portuguese, with Spanish as well. So. These are tips that I've used myself, they're tips that I've given to my students, they're tips that teachers have given me, that students have given me, and I've just put them in a big ball of tips for you in this video, so I hope it's helped. So before we finish, let me know in the comments, what do you do to improve your listening skills? Do you feel you always need subtitles? Are you gonna tell me down below in the comments that you are going to promise to persevere with yourself and you are going to practice and you're going to start listening to other materials that are not designed for English learners? I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you really soon. Bye bye.